we really have to put a stop when with that, the whole thing is when you apply for a credit card an unsecured credit card and you have poor FICO score and you have no steady pay in other words your income is not really uh, stable we got to put a stop to your ass being denied all all the time really when you think about it because i'm tired of it i'm sure you are tired of it so we really need to put a stop to it okay so if you are listening to me right now and you are looking for and you want to apply for an unsecured credit card and you have poor FACO and you have no steady pay listen really really from a to z because i'm going to give you a lot of tips and tricks that will help you a lot in terms of uh, getting approved asap so here are the steps i really want you to follow son daughter here are the steps i really want you to follow the very first thing i want you to do right now if you if, if anybody's telling you yeah you know you have poor FICO score you can't qualify anyway for a business loan or a business credit card or a personal credit card or business, whatever whatever credit product you are looking for personally or business wise if you have poor FACO, the only thing I, the first thing i want you to do is to actually check whether or not you indeed have a poor FACO score see the thing is a poor FACO score is uh, actually uh, something anything below 579 okay everybody's talking about yeah you have a poor FACO score but my question to you is when was the last time for real when was the last time you checked your FACO score and i'm not just talking about checking your FACO score at one bureau I'm talking about checking your FICO score at each bureau, each of the three bureaus. You go to uh, TransUnion, you check. You go to Experian, you check. You go to Equifax, you check. And so when was the last time you took it for real? You really checked whether or not you indeed have a poor FICO score. It's important to have clarity. People are talking about, yeah, you know, you have FICO score, okay? You know, I want you to tell yourself right now, you know, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to be very serious here. I want to see how poor my FICO really is. Don't be scared about your FICO score. You know, kind of, you know, I, I don't want to open that. I don't want to open, uh, you know, this because this is a, a Pandora's box. I don't know what I'm going to see in there. No, take the time to check your FICO score. That way, you know, once, once and for once and for all where you are at. Okay. When we talk about, when I talk about where you are at, it means that you know whether you are at 540 or you are, you are at 340 or you are at 440. Okay. So in this economy, in this economy, you know, it's important to know your FICO score. Even the Wall Street Journal two days ago was talking about that. The Wall Street Journal was talking about the importance of your, your FICO score when it comes to a credit card application or loan application. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here to have a quick combo with you about this topic. Make yourself comfortable. We are going to uh, have a we're going to have a, a very nice combo into this into in today's uh, show. So the first thing is to actually uh, know your FICO score. The second thing is you have to really decide how you're going to use a credit card. Okay, you need to have a clear idea how you want to use the credit card. The, th the whole thing is when we talk about credit cards in general, and let's say you have no steady income. Okay, you have poor FICO score. Okay, but the thing is, how are you going to use the credit card? Because see, how are you going to use the credit card is important because you might qualify despite your unstable income you might qualify despite your poor faco depending on the the type of cars you choose let me give you an example when we talk about types of cars we're speaking about rewards credit cards we're talking about introductory zero percent apr credit cards we're, sp we're speaking about cars that offer you sign up bonuses we're speaking about cars that are se like secure credit cards or we're speaking about student credit cards so you have an entire typology of credit cards to, to, to consider so even if you have poor FACO even if you have no steady income even if you have uh, whatever like whatever is the detrimental uh, condition that you have that you think is a deal breaker if you're able to to zero in on the specific uh, if you are able to zero in on the right type of credit card the right type of unsecured credit card for that matter you will get you get approved by the way son daughter I want to quickly remind you to this topic what are we talking about here we're talking about unsecured credit card, poor FACO score, no steady income. How do you get up? How do you actually uh, get qualified? And the third thing I want you to do after after actually deciding how what kind of car, what kind of card you want is to shop around for, for credit cards. And when we talk about credit cards, shopping around for credit cards, don't just stop at your bank. I want you to consider also uh, credit unions. And I want you to consider also online lenders nowadays lenders such as uh, Avant, 
lenders such as uh, you know the uh, issuers of pedal 2 pedal 1 those are credit cards that are really valid credit cards that basically will will approve your ass no matter what see the thing is banks may be a little risk averse not a little they are risk averse credit unions may not be why because they know you they know you credit unions are like family uh, like family lenders if you will or family credit card insurers and they they actually cater to their their uh, members needs and if you happen to have the right relationship with a credit union you would qualify for a, a for a, an unsecured credit card with a massive amount despite your poor FICO score and your income instability this is really where you want to shop around you can also go for an online lender an online credit card issuer as i said you have upgrade you have upstart you have uh, avon those are fintechs that actually have partnerships with the regular banks to issue credit cards and their their uh, let's say their eligibility criteria are a little better they're a little better than uh, not better in terms of uh, the, the terms and conditions but a, a little more more flexible than what you will find at a regular bank Let me talk to you about the, the fourth thing I want you to do here is to review the car terms. See, the whole thing is that, you know, if you are looking for an unsecured credit card, you want to get a massive, uh, massive approval, massive limit, and you have poor FICO, you have no steady income, like you're, like you're, strugg you're struggling to make ends meet, but you, you do have money though. If you, if you are looking, once you have found your perfect credit card, do not rush. Son, I don't want you to start dancing like, you know, kumbaya, kumbaya, blah, blah, blah. I've got my, uh, my ideal credit card. No, you take the time to analyze the card terms and conditions. You take the time to analyze the, uh, the, the, the credit limit that, that you are given. You take the time to, to analyze things like uh, the annual fee. Oh, yeah. If you have a card that is charging you a massive annual fee, that, pl that plays a pivotal role in your usage of the card. Okay. And the, 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 let's say, uh, depending on the, the amount of, uh, like, depending on the, the annual fee, how much they want to charge you, you might want to say, you know what? No, 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 no. My ass is out of here. I, you know, I, I'm not taking that credit card. Y'all keep it. Because, you know, if, if a credit card is charging you, say, $100, because usually the card that charges you, that charge you annual fees, they are charging you annual fees because they're expecting you to use the card so that you can generate enough rewards, enough perks to offset the fee they're charging you in the first place. This is really what it is. Now, that's uh, what standard credit cards do, standard unsecured credit card, credit cards. Now, if you are, if you have in like the second chance credit cards, the, like credit cards for subpar FICO scores, sometimes they charge you annual fees just because they're trying to really uh, limit their risks. That's all. So you got to really pay attention to the APR, the, the bank or credit union or online lender is charging you. Pay attention to the balance transfer fee. So if you choose to do a balance transfer, ask yourself whether or not the fee is really worth it. Think about the cash advance fee also. Is it really worth it? Think about the, the foreign transaction fee. If you are someone who travels a lot, if you travel a lot or you are going to shop on online websites, be careful about the foreign transaction fee also. And think about the minimum payments. This also plays an important role. And think about the penalty APR. So those are elements you need to really, you need to constantly check. The next thing I want you to do here is to, uh, to submit your application. Sometimes a lot of uh, folks who have no steady income and they have poor FICO score, they actually start a process and they never submit this, never submit their application. In other words, they are just like they are stuck into something called analysis paralysis. Like you try to apply for a bit for a personal credit card, you apply here, you apply there. Like you, you're always trying to pre-qualify. That way, you know you you, you are saving your FICO score. That's a smart move, though. That's that's a smart that's a smart strategy. However, don't just don't just get stuck in the analysis paralysis phase of uh, the your credit card application which is what which is you trying to pre-qualify you go in here looking for a pre-qualification you go into trace you go into chase you go into a capital one you go into discover and you're always trying to pre-qualify but you never take the chance to actually uh, you know qualify like for real and have the credit the credit card provider actually do a hard pull on your faculty so 
do it, but at the end, you got to submit an application. Okay, so that you just be ready for it. the hard pull. Be ready for the, uh, the you know, the, the occasional 10 to 15 points ding on your credit score. Be ready for that. By the way, son, daughter, I want to really remind you of today's uh, topic. I'm talking to you about unsecured credit card with poor faculty score, no steady income. What are the hacks you can use right now to be uh, to be approved for a high limit? And so once you actually submit your application, be very clear to w when uh, you want to uh, get your credit card as soon as possible. Sometimes uh, some uh, issuers will even give you a will even issue a virtual credit card. So you have a virtual credit card number that you can add to your digital wallet and start a and start using the card and use the card responsibly, though. You want to start using the card responsibly so that you are in a better situation to get a credit limit and increase your FACO score in the process. So those are the the tips and hacks that you can approve you can actually use to get approved for an unsecured credit card with poor faco and no steady income now let me give you a, a few pro tips to actually to always get approved for a, a credit card even if you don't have a job okay and so the very first thing i want you to do right now is to count all your income see the whole thing is what we talk about not having a job you don't have a job that you probably had you probably are pulling revenue from somewhere I don't know what that somewhere is, but you're pulling revenue from somewhere to be able to survive because you're putting food on the table. You're putting, you're eating, you're having a, 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 a let's say, a life. You live in something. You, you, you might be thinking, well, I don't think, I don't think of my life right now as life, but you are living something. And that thing that you're living, it requires some, uh, some kind of uh, revenue. So count all your income, right? So earned wages from part-time, full-time or seasonal employment self-employment income, interest or dividends, retirement income, public assistance, money that someone else regularly deposits into an account for you to use. Yeah, this could be a, this could be a trust or this could be like a spousal support. Like this are really important. I'll speak about the spousal support a little more, but when we talk about revenue, you want to you want to cast a wider net in terms of counting your your income. And uh, the second thing I want you to do here is to include your spouse's income. So this is a uh, very important. So when we talk about credit cards, now credit cards have uh, a, a legal responsibility, a regulatory responsibility to count the income that you get from uh, your spouse. Like if this is based on a court approved order though. So it can be a child support, it can be spousal support, it could be anything that your spouse is, is actually helping you in terms of income. You can choose, you can use that as income. Yeah, this is totally fine. This is totally normal, not a problem. You can try also to go with a co-signer. This is totally possible, okay? So that even if you have a poor FACO, no steady income, you can still qualify for a massive limit on your unsecured credit card and try to really start becoming an authorized user right now. If you know you want to approve for, you want to apply for a an unsecured credit card with the poor FACO, no steady income, and you want to be approved at some point, you want to start now. You want you want to become you want to try to become an authorized user. Talk to your cousin Joe. Talk talk to your to your to your niece. Uh, you know, um, Janet Janetta. Talk to your dad. Talk to your mom. Talk to your granddad. Talk to your grand your, your grandma. Talk to your your aunt, your uncle. Talk to anybody in your family who happens to have a good credit score. You know, I don't want you to to uh, to uh, talk to a cheap ass uncle or cheap ass aunt that has a, a, a crappy credit score. No, I mean, there's no need to become an authorized user on uh, somebody's uh, like somebody's credit cards. And you know, that person has a messy sort of a routine, a messy financial routine or messy credit card payment history. No, you always just want to cling on to uh, folks who have a good sort of a good history to share with you. And another thing you can try also is to consider a secure credit card. Consider a secure credit card. This is important. I mean, you know, if you are trying to get for, if you're trying to get an unsecured credit card with poor FICO and no steady income, and they don't want, they don't want to approve your ass, try to try to try a different strategy, try a different, a different take, a different option here. And what you can do here is, is to say, you know, can I just maybe put 200 or 300 towards a 
a secure credit card to use as a deposit and so I'm, I'm gonna use the card for six months so I can really beef up my uh, my my FACO score because this makes a big difference if you are let's say at 340 versus 640 if you are 340 versus 440 versus 540 even in a subpar territory in the subprime territory when it comes to credit scores it really does make a big difference okay if you are if you are at 325 versus you are at 400 it does make a difference at least from a lender's perspective at least from a credit card issuer's perspective and you can also try to get a debit card that comes with credit card perks okay you can start doing that so that you know you again at some point you can apply for a, a real credit card there are a lot of uh debit cards a lot of debit cards that really uh, come with credit card perks in terms of rewards for example okay in terms of uh in terms of uh you know cash back for example so you but you have to do a little bit of research though and you know a lot of uh like you have some some um credit cards that give you like a cash back feature for example we have aspiration span with that product you can actually uh, the aspiration spend and save account offers the chance to earn cash back when you use your debit card as well as a, a, an apr that is kind of like a similar that an apr that's kind of decent now this kind of this kinds of product don't happen often you're gonna have to dig a little deeper but it is totally possible to actually get that if you look if you look at your credit union if you look into your credit unions whatever they offer if you look into your your bank your local bank your national bank your regional bank to see what what it offers okay and also try credit card alternatives you know everybody wants to get a credit card but you can try to have like for example you can have a, a credit builder loan if that really works for you or you can try another credit card alternative. let's see the point is that if you have a poor faco you need to increase it at some point and in trying to really increase it, you might do something that you did not you did not anticipate in the first place. Let me actually uh, close to this conversation by having a few uh, series of questions and answers so that you can crystallize. You can, I want to really clarify the situation for you. See, the thing is that you can get a credit card with no income. Yes, definitely. If anybody's telling you, hey, listen, you know, you can't qualify for a credit card because you have no income. Tell them that uh, they are lying to your face. There are two things you need to consider, though. So, number one, when I say no income, does it really mean no income? Or it means no steady income or no income from a regular nine to five or no income from a, you know, a regular job? It can be a weekend job, it can be a night shift, it can be a day shift, whatever it is. It can be a first shift, second shift, third shift, whatever. So my question to you is, what are you what are you getting revenue from? Like right now you're listening to me on you're listening to me here, maybe on a mobile or on a on a home computer or on your laptop. So if you have no income, where are you de deriving the revenue to pay for those for pay for internet, to pay for the laptop you're listening to me on, to pay for the the, the phone you're using? What, where are you deriving the revenue? So really, the thing is that you do have some income coming in. You just have to remember to sh to actually um, mention that income on your credit card application. It doesn't matter. It does. And, you know, lenders and credit card issuers they understand that there are different population segments that respond to different sort of uh, I would say incentives. So they will be willing to actually consider your application. Okay, and even if you are getting a credit card for the first time you can still qualify if you apply properly if you are able to pull together you're able to uh, gather your all your income sources and to show the lender hey listen i mean i have a regular job but i do have this income this income this income and this income and all those sources of income are stable they're coming every month whether it is a child support whether it is spousal support alimony and what have you that money is coming is, is just dropping every single month because for a credit card issuer to give you an unsecured credit card poor FICO no steady income that issuer wants to make sure that you have revenue stability you have income stability so that whatever you charge on a card you can repay you can you can pay off the balance okay and so this is really really pivotal
thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to get an unsecured credit card with poor FICO and no steady income. I gave you a few steps that you need to, to, to take. I explained to you the pro tips and uh, I ended up, I, ended, I really end up today's conversation by giving you a bonus about getting a credit card with no income. Thank you. God bless you. I'll speak to you another day. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.